Welcome, uh, everybody. Um, I see some people are still joining, but I'd suggest we start um, so we can get going and we can send Erjibet on our holiday off <laughs> afterwards, if that's okay. So welcome to this first um, webinar in the Open Access Week webinar series organized by uh, Open Air. And so we're very happy to have today this collaboration with, uh, with, Dari, with Daria. Um, and uh, Erjibet Tokshifra and Miriam Balioni will present the Open Air Daria Community Gateway, uh, a way to make your research more visible and more connected. Um, before we start, uh, just some, some minor housekeeping rules. Um, so if you're using social media, please open, please use the hashtags openair underscore EU and uh, Daria open. Um, as a participant, you are standardly muted and you cannot show your video. So uh, don't, if, if you try it and it doesn't work, it's because it's uh, disabled, um, it's disabled at the back end. Uh, that's just because you're, there are too many of you and uh, we cannot, uh, uh, it would be chaotic if everybody could talk and, and uh, show their video. But if you have a question during the presentation, I would suggest that you use the Q&A um, box, which is uh, at the bottom of the screen. You will see it if you hover over the bottom of the window, you see a Q&A box and you can actually uh, enter a question there and you can also see what other people uh, what other people are asking. And so um, that will, um, you can also comment on other people's questions and you can upvote them. Uh, and that will allow the presenters to uh, deal with your question uh, during Q&A time, like an organized matter, so they know which questions are more popular and they can, they can deal with all your questions and uh, move them to the answered category once, they're, once uh, they have provided an answer. Um, if you have technical issues, if you want to say hello, uh, if you have a question that is not directly related to the content of the presentation, uh, please use the chat box. Um, so uh, questions about the presentation, questions for the presenters, please use the Q&A box. Uh, we will make the recordings and slides of this webinar available ASAP. Um, this will probably be hopefully tomorrow. Depends a bit on how quickly we can process the recording. Uh, it will be available via the Open Air YouTube channel via uh, Zenodo, um, also on the Open Air Open Access Week overview page on the dedicated webinar pages. I assume also on the Daria uh, website. Uh, and please keep an eye on our social media. We will announce it uh, there the moment, uh, the moment the presentations and uh, recordings are ready. So um, with uh, this being said, uh, please enjoy this webinar and Erzabeth and Miriam, the floor is yours. Okay, hello everyone and welcome at the webinar. Let me start uh, with a compulsory gesture of uh, sharing my screen. Uh, just give me a second. And there we are. Uh, you should be able to see my screen, but of course, uh, shout out loud if uh, you have any technical problems. So welcome uh, everyone again. My name is uh, Erzé Beto Cifra from uh, Daria Europe. And so first of all, what to expect today? Um, uh, we are going to see, we are going to start with the challenges first. So what kind of challenges uh, we are aiming to tackle with the uh, Daria Open Air Research Community dashboard. Um, then uh, my colleague Miriam is going to introduce Open Air to you and uh, the Open Air Research Graph on the top of which uh, the community dashboard is built. Um, then we see, we're gonna see what's inside and how you can interact uh, with the dashboard. Uh, and then in the second half of the webinar, we are going to take the dashboard together to a trace drive and see how it works for your research, how it works for your discovery routine. And of course, then uh, we're gonna conclude with a Q&A session. So let's get started. Um, and as I promised you, uh, we're going to start with the problems. Here are two main questions to put you in the mood a little bit and you know also distract you from your emails uh, if you happen to do uh, emails in the background. So the first question um, we had in mind when uh, uh, teaming up with OpenAir to develop this dashboard is how to align units of scholarly communication 
uh, and workflows of scholarly communication with our increasingly diverse digital scholarly workflows. In other words, how to go beyond the very 17th century of scholarly publication that is restricted to paper-based uh, content forms. And in closely related to this, uh, the another question that covered, uh, governed the development of the dashboard was uh, like, what are the scholarly entities that are completely invisible from our publication records that are totally unrewarded in our tenure and promotion uh, from our tenure and proportion guideline? What, 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 what is the kind of the scholarly work that remain invisible from um, the official reward criteria? And I want you to um, give me a little bit of an, let's, start, let's kick off the webinar with giving me a little bit of an input. Uh, we are going to use the good old Mentimeter for this purpose. So I would like to ask you to think about this question. What is the kind of scholarly work that is invisible uh, from your rewarding systems? Or even more importantly, what are the content types that you are not rewarded for by your institution? Uh, do you work with data? Do you develop tools? Do you uh, spend a lot of time with editing stuff, be reviewing stuff, um, developing websites, blogging, whatever? Um, go to mentimeter.com, use the code of 7533811. And we are going to take a look at your answers, okay? Uh, should I? Ah, uh, yeah. I should keep sharing my screen. Uh, but then, uh, no, no, no. yes, maybe you can copy the information in the chat. Oh yeah, um, true. Actually, like um, the thing is that I can either uh, share my screen or I can copy the information to the chat. So I'm not sure whether maybe you or Miriam could do that because uh, then the code will not be visible uh, for the attendees because I stopped sharing my screen. Yeah, I cannot. I, I cannot copy from your present from your presentation. Ah, okay. okay. Just copy from the presentation. Yeah, and then see okay. the code, and then people can. Can okay. see that, and then you can show the results page. Okay, okay. So let me just copy it for a second. Okay, so okay, and I can see I can see the answers uh, coming in the meantime, so it's good. Uh, let me just let me just uh, give a couple of couple of more minutes for you. Yotranka, um, regarding your question, here is the voting link. I think this should work as well. So let's see what your input says. Uh, developing website, curating research data, very important. Software, okay. Digital research. Can you, can you, can you share, share that? Yes. Can, can you share, share that page? page? Just if you go to share screen, you can share this web page as well. Of course, if we want, uh, we can take a look together. Can you? Can exactly. You yeah. Uh -huh. So it's quite interesting. Uh, people also uh, mention social media. Uh huh. Yes, data curation, tools and software development, website management, all digital stuff. Audio samples. Uh -huh. I would I would also claim the musicologist example under uh, under data curation. 
indexing data, mm -hmm. metadata curation, very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting results. So um, I will keep it open. Uh, and if you have time or uh, like if you have ideas after the after the um, uh, webinar, uh, we can uh, continue the discussion and uh, we are going to uh, collect your input as well. But so what is pretty apparent from your answers is that there is a lot of digital work that remains invisible uh, from our tenure promotion guidelines. Um, another problem that we uh, kept in mind when um, um, started to think about the dashboard is that um, the arts and humanities domain, and if you're a humanist, I think you are well aware of this, um, there is an especially, we have an especially diverse publication landscape, which means that on the one hand, the richness of local contexts and formats in which our scholarship is embedded, like linguistic, different multilingual contexts, uh, disciplinary contexts, local geographical contexts, um, is recognized as a key value in a humanities scholarship. But on the other hand, this leads to a very fragmented publication landscape. And if you think about it, we don't have our own PubMed, we don't have our own archive. So the lack of domain specific databases that are coming from um, global really strong coverage uh, and such discovery tools um, are completely lacking. And so it's very difficult to find and access and connect and reuse digital content from the arts and humanities scholarship. Um, if you think about, if you have experiences with working uh, large scale collaborative projects, European one or national one and international one, uh, even if you think about in the context of just one project, the research result can result in like, you know, uh, can end up in very different corners of the web, right? Like some of them uh, land in a classic publication, book chapter research paper, some of them will uh, end in a data repository, institutional or thematic or generic one like Zenodo. Um, some of the information will end in the project website or blogs. And also let's be honest, uh, some of the stuff will remain uh, on your hard drives. So this is the first problem, scattered publication landscape, not easy to get an overview, even in the context of one single project. Um, the second thing that we um, uh, reflected already in the Mentimeter is that, let's be honest, like research, pu research publications that cannot be placed on a bookshelf are pretty much invisible from our uh, rewarding uh, criteria. So this is especially a problem in the context of uh, digital humanities when we are talking about uh, humanities. And so there is a huge, like, um, you know, there is a vicious circle because in many cases, institutions says that we are in favor of rewarding uh, and recognizing the work that happens below the tip of the iceberg of a classic publication. But unfortunately, we don't have information management systems um, that are able to accommodate um, these digital scholarly content types like research data or software or digital editions or other research outputs. So we really need uh, such discovery systems, such information management systems, um, which are inclusive with these content types and very importantly, which have been developed and will remain in public hands. So, uh, you know, as severe clarivate analytics, getting hands on your research data is probably not the optimal scenario in this respect. So the public ownership is also really important. Um, let's talk about, let's uh, like take steps to, towards the solutions. First of all, um, for those who are not familiar with Daria, uh, the, the first uh, collaborating party uh, in this webinar, Daria is a European Research Infrastructure Consortium for Arts and Humanities Research, um, which means that, uh, that uh, uh, all the major disciplines uh, have such a ERIC, a Research Infrastructure Consortium, uh, to provide research support across Europe, across institutions, across countries. And so Daria's mission is to empower arts and humanities research communities 
with um, digital tools, digital know-how to create, connect and share knowledge about culture and society. So we have 60 members and 11 cooperating partners. Uh, you can visit our website, daria.eu, and, uh, and importantly, uh, you can also follow and tag us on Twitter as well. Um, if you visit our website, um, you uh, will find information about our activities that uh, I won't talk about today, which is really important that um, if you think about the idea of um, research infrastructure consortium that is transnational, um, and is based on uh, institutions, researchers, research communities, disciplines, collaborative work. This is very much uh, in line with what we call uh, open access or uh, open science. So Doria is strongly committed to uh, the open research culture from its very beginning. It's in our DNA. And um, it's really a strategic priority for us to build a strong open agenda that actually works for the arts and humanities research to fill those gap between the principles of open research and the realities of uh, arts and humanities research. So uh, we have support structures and uh, we do a lot of open access, open science advocacy. We have a strong open access policy within DARIA. And uh, so uh, we have all kinds of tools and services to make this transition to the open research culture easier, specifically uh, for humanists. But importantly, we are not only preaching about, um, you know, uh, open research culture, but as a research infrastructure consortium, you realize the word infrastructure is there. Um, so we also provide infrastructural components for researchers to actually realize these practices. Um, um, we have um, a repository, part of the um, French National uh, Hall Repository, where we uh, store uh, the Doria and collect the Doria publications. It's open uh, to the whole Doria, all the Doria communities. Everybody can uh, deposit their research there. Um, and of course, we also have a Zenodo community where people can self-publish, share preprints, share presentations, uh, share their research. And uh, a last thing uh, is that um, we also find it important to connect our communities with fair open access players. So as examples, you can see Open Edition here, uh, which is a um, electronic publication platforms for open access journals, books, and blogs. This is also a Daria affiliated service. And below you can find episciences.org, which is also affiliated and associated with Daria. Um, this is an interesting um, infrastructure built on the top of the Hall repository for overlay journals. So we have connections with, uh, in a, like, publication innovators as well. Um, but we also have data repositories affiliated with Doria. The interesting thing is that um, um, like um, in contrast to many other European research infrastructure uh, um, um, consortia, if you know uh, others, uh, you will recognize this, um, this diversity of uh, arts and humanities uh, research contexts and this fragmentation is also reflected in our data repository landscape. So the repositories that and data services that are associated with DORIA are very heterogeneous and, uh, and uh, we don't, we decided not to federate them, not to centralize them. So uh, you will find a different disciplinary local uh, contexts uh, uh, reflected in our repository landscape as well. Uh, I put here a couple of examples. Uh, the French Social Sciences and Humanities Repository in Akala. We are going to talk about this. Um, the German Text Grid, which is um, uh, part of a whole uh, virtual research environment. It's a repository for uh, critical digital editions. Uh, we are going to talk about that as well. The Daria Day repository, the digital repository of Ireland, uh, which might be familiar to many of you, and two uh, Polish repositories, for example, the one is the repository for uh, open repository for uh, historical sciences in Poland, and the second one is uh, for um, Slavic studies. 
So, but these are just examples. And if you want to learn more about the repository landscape affiliated with Doria and the other research infrastructures working in a field of social sciences and humanities, um, you can find the shortened links that I put here. Um, there is a task force within the social sciences and humanities open cloud project who are landscaping these repositories and analyzing them and makes recommendations to their certification improvement, whatever. Um, so this is a, a little bit of an extra for you to explore uh, maybe after the webinar. Um, so I think at this point, um, you, uh, it must be clear who we are, who is Doria. It must also be clear uh, why we uh, so do value in the research community uh, dashboard. And I think at this point, I'm going to give uh, the floor to Miriam, who is going to introduce the another cooperating part partner uh, to you, OpenAir, and the OpenAir Research Graph and the Community Gateway. So Miriam, the floor is yours. I stop sharing my screen now. Thanks, Esbeth. Can you see my screen? I hope you can. Hi, everyone. I am Miriam Baglioni from CNR, and I will talk about a bit about OpenAir and how to select the part of the information that it provides to populate the OpenAir Research Gateway for Daria. OpenAir started in 209 to implement the FP7 Open Access Pilot for publication, trying to search links between publication and EC funded projects. Then it was funded again and the access was uh, the, the accent was uh, uh, on uh, uh, the links to all the all the uh, European funders, not just uh, EC. And uh, we tried to find links also to dataset. In 217, we had the uh, open access data by default, and you had the opt out option. So. Uh, all the uh, funded projects by the SC should uh, publish their data in open access. And with the advent of the, open, of the European Open Science Cloud, the attention shift from open access to open science. Open Air became a legal entity, and in 2021, with Horizon Europe, open science will be the modus operandi. So what is Open Air? Open Air is uh, the European infrastructure for open science. It promotes open science and open science publishing principle. How does it do it? By uh, exploiting three pillars of action. It develops and promotes the adoption of global and standards and interoperability guidelines to realize a scholarly communication ecosystem that will be open to all the stakeholders and that will be sustainable, participatory and trusted. Thanks to the network of, of National Open Access Desk, it supports uh, the implementation of open science at the local level, uh, at the national level by helping researchers, project coordinators, but also funders with training and support activity like workshop and webinars. Last but not least, it provides many services. We have different services for all the different stakeholders in the scholarly communication ecosystem that range from researchers, content providers, but also research infrastructure, funders, and small medium enterprises. Many of these services are based on the open air research graph. What is a graph? A graph is a model to describe a domain. The domain that we search to describe is the scholarly communication one. So the nodes in the graph will be the stakeholders and the, and the arcs will be the relationship that, bring, that uh, bind them together. How can we grow this graph? 
We collect from many different repositories and from funder databases. We collect what? We collect metadata and uh, we ask them to follow the guidelines that we provided. Once we have collected this data, we transform them in our internal data model. And every once in a while, we take a picture of the transformed data and we start building the graph. The first step that we do, that we do uh, during the building of the graph is a step of the duplication. Why we do this? Because collecting information from many different data sources um, makes us collect uh, metadata from different points, but related to the same uh, um, research product. So we need to uh, recognize these metadata that are, that are relevant and are related to the same product and put them together and produce just one representative that hopefully will be richer than the native ones. Then we do a step of enrichment. We do not just collect metadata, we collect also PDF of the open access publication and we apply mining in this full text. Why we do this? To enrich the graph by adding links between research products and, and, and funders and, product and projects and research products and, and research infrastructures. We also have another step of enrichment that we call propagation. It exploits native information of the entities and the semantics of the relationship that uh, binds to node to infer new information in the form of links that can be added to the graph. This is the automatic stuff that OpenAir do, does to uh, build the graph, but there is also the work that the end user can do because the graph is participatory, is everyone's graph. So if you go and search in OpenAir and you find that something that should be linked is not, you can add this link. You can also grow the graph by adding products that are not there by searching them in data site, crossref, or or ORCID. If you want to discover more, you can go at graph.openair.eu to have uh, a more comprehensive uh, information about the open air research graph. Just to give you an idea, we collect metadata, links, and full text from more than 2K sources worldwide to materialize a graph where entities of the research life cycle are linked to each other. We collect metadata from PubMed. We collect data repository that are uh, registered to retrieve data. We collect uh, links from Skull Explorer. We collect information about uh, grid uh, organization from Grid. We collect all ORCID. And summing up, we have more than 400 million harvested records. 500 million bilateral links and more than 13 million of full text on which you can apply mining. These are the set of services that can be built on top of the graph. And now we are concentrating on the uh, Open Air Connect one. What is uh, the Open Air Research Community Dashboard? It is a service that allows us to deploy gateways to research communities, research infrastructure, and research initiatives. Why did we want to provide this service? Because as has been said before, data are a lot, are scattered all over, and it is really, really difficult for a researcher to find something that is interesting for him. But it's also difficult to let the other find the research that he has, he has done to let them know which is the service of his research infrastructure that has used. It is difficult to publish following the open science publishing principle. And it is also difficult if you, are, if you are the manager of a research infrastructure to compute the, the importance of your research infrastructure to find which are the, the, the relevant pieces of information that can help you to measure your impact. The gateway can be an answer to all these questions. The gateway aims to be a single entry point for all the research products that can be related to a research community or a research infrastructure. In this kind, in this, uh, in this uh, now it is for, for Daria. But how can we 
choose among all the products that are present in open air, those that are relevant for a given uh, gateway. This is mainly due to the work of the gateway curator. It is uh, up to the curator to provide us a list that allow us to uh, link some products to the gateway. The curator should provide us with a, a, a list of projects funding the, the infrastructure and we can, uh, thanks to uh, the association between the result and the project, add uh, the results to the, to the gateway. The curator should uh, select some data sources that are relevant for this community as well as the uh, general community. And then it should also ask the mining team to implement a mining algorithm specific for the research infrastructure that searches in the full text of the open access publications that we have downloaded those that are relevant for the, uh, for the infrastructure. Also the researchers can have, uh, can play a role in uh, uh, growing the information related to the gateway. They can do it by uh, manually linking missing research products to the gateway, thanks to the link functionality that we will see later on, but also providing a list of DOI in bulk and we will get this list and everything that is in there for which we have a DOI can be uh, 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 associated to the dashboard. And then open air helps also by applying what we saw before, uh, propagation, that uh, exploits strong semantic link between two products. For example, if I know that a publication is related to the area and that is also uh, supplemented by a data source that is not related to the area, thanks to this strong semantic relationship, I can uh, take, let me say, take this, the data source and bring it in the Daria gateway. Connect.openair.eu is the entry point for all the gateways that we have so far. And you will find also the access to the Daria one. And uh, if you want to build on the results that are within a gateway, you can do, uh, you can do it in two ways. You can uh, use the API that OpenAir provides to collect all the results that are associated uh, to uh, a gateway, or you can uh, download the dump of the research community or infrastructure you are interested in that is published in, in Zenodo. And then I will leave the floor to Esbet again that will show which are the information that she has provided us to populate the, the dashboard. Esbet, the floor is yours. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, okay. And hold on, uh, participants, we are going to stop talking soon and uh, start, a practical, uh, start a practical part. Uh, wait, maybe I should share my screen again okay okay uh, just let me put it to presentation mode so we are going to have a very quick look at uh, how we populated the dashboard so far but please keep in mind that this is an ongoing effort um, so first of all it was uh, super important to identify the already existing area communities and I already mentioned this uh, French uh, national uh, repository for you Hall, uh, which is a primary information hub for Daria um, here uh, the mining rule is that uh, every uh, rec each record that contains Daria in any of their metadata fields should automatically be added to the Daria Open Air Research Community Dashboard. And we also identified um, the Daria relevant Senado communities and added them to the dashboard. Um, but of course, uh, and like from Hall, you uh, mainly have publications. Um, if you're familiar with Zenodo, you know that Zenodo is pretty much um, everything. So you will find here research data, um, publications, presentation slides, software, uh, whatever, everything, uh, all kinds of content types uh, in the Doria uh, community. 
And so we also found it super important to add uh, very affiliated data services to the dashboard um, and to, this, to, to, to make their work uh, visible in a shared European horizon. And so to this end, we selected two of the flagship DARIA data services, the French SSH, Social Science and Humanities repository NACA, and uh, the German repository TechScript, which is an end stage of a whole virtual research environment where uh, humanities scholars can create uh, uh, encoded uh, digital critical editions of literary work or music. And they have a repository that we also um, um, selected for this exercise. Um, unfortunately, the text script content is not yet part of the uh, Daria uh, dashboard, so you won't find uh, content from text script, but stay tuned, uh, it will land in our dashboard uh, in a couple of days, really, uh, a week or so. And so the task in order to like the, the, the challenge was here to, inter, to, to develop interoperability frameworks between these two data services that are operating on a national level and has their uh, uh, domain specific flavors of metadata standards. So in practice, it meant that uh, uh, the developers of these services had to uh, set up metadata crosswalks between their own standards, uh, data site or DC terms. Um, uh, with the open air, uh, stand, uh, sorry, uh, Dublin Core uh, on its terms with the open air uh, standards uh, based on data site. Um, so uh, it was Nicola Larus and Johan Moranville who did the uh, Nakala part. So the reason why you are able to find Nakala content and Nakala data in the Daria dashboard is uh, thanks to them. And as a second step, we also selected, uh, we were quite strict with the curation policy. Uh, we selected uh, only a subset of uh, content found in these uh, data repositories that are the stronger, really strongly associated with DARIA, either from uh, the national uh, DARIA institutions or uh, projects that had been funded directly by DARIA. And finally, we also wanted to, um, include the publications to the dashboard that are publications in a classic sense that are uh, published by academic publishers and it's out of our control, you know, in terms of metadata and standards and everything. To this end, we curate a Zotero library uh, with underlying uh, Google Scholar query. So it works like uh, if a publication record lands uh, or started to be indexed by Google Scholar that contains the word Daria, then it should uh, be automatically landed in this uh, Zotero uh, collection where we uh, manually discard or approve them. And so it yet it takes at this point a lot of manual curation to, you know, fish from this uh, Zotero library to select only those records and add them to the uh, Daria dashboard that are truly affiliated with Daria. So entries where Daria is just mentioned or Daria services just mentioned will not end here, but um, um, descriptions of Daria services, reflections on them, uh, publications from Daria affiliated authors will land in the Daria dashboard. So we started adding them uh, and it's an ongoing work. We are proceeding in a retro active basis from 2020 on. So uh, soon um, you will uh, find the whole coverage, but now you can uh, find only entries from, uh, or mainly from 2020. Um, we can save the lessons learned for later, I guess, uh, for during the Q&A, if we will uh, have time uh, for this. And um, it's more important to touch upon very quickly uh, What's in there for you? Like why, why, uh, why uh, it's an interesting thing for you to uh, interact with a dashboard. Um, for researchers, it's pretty obvious. It's a discovery tool where they can find not only publications, but also data and software. They can explore links between uh, the different content types and they can also connect their own research uh, to the dashboard and like, uh, you know, um, affiliated with Daria and increase its visibility. For content providers, um, 
you will see uh, that like uh, if you really invest into these metadata crosswalks, then it has uh, quite an impact in terms of visibility because uh, uh, your uh, the content of your service uh, will be visible will be part of the open air research graph and of course will be featured um, in the Doria dashboard if it's a Doria service. And uh, for institutions, it's pretty much the same um, advantage is present. So you can showcase your work, you can showcase your institution's work, you can showcase all the advancement you make, all the scholarship you have on a local level, you can lift it up to the European horizon. So I think uh, uh, we are now at the hands-on part. Before we start our little, you know, scavenger hunt exercises. Uh, I think uh, Miriam is going to um, uh, give us a brief uh, feature tutorial, right, Miriam? Yeah. Okay. So I stopped uh, sharing my screen. I already stopped it. It was just a very, very quick demo of the dashboard. Dashboard. You should stop sharing your screen. You should be able to share your screen, Miriam. Yeah. Yes. Just a moment. I So, as I said before, this is the entry point for the gateways, and you call you can you can uh, enter one. You can in this case we have uh, selected the Daria one. In the home page, you can see the uh, summary. What is uh, the gateway about? Who is the curator? How many publications? How many research data? How much soft? How many software and uh, how many other research products it contains? Which are the projects? Uh, sorry, Miriam. I think we are uh, looking at your slides and not your screen. Ah, I'm sorry. So let me try it again. <laughs> sorry. Can you can you see it? Yes. Now we 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 can uh, we can see everything pretty much. Oh, is it? Is, uh -huh, yes. Can you see the the Dahlia? Yes. Okay. It's perfect now. Okay. So you will see uh, a description of the dashboard. Who is who, Which are the supporting organization in this case is Dahlia EU. You can go and see which are the most the, the five recent publications that uh, you can uh, find in the gateway. If you click on it, you will have a summary, a description of the publication with the summary where you can go and download it, which are the funded projects, which are the communities that are related in this case, also the digital humanities and cultural heritage. You have the search functionality. If you click on it, you will have uh, a sort of filters that can be used to, to refine your search. The open access one will be added by default, but you can remove it. You can also use the advanced search. You can choose among many, many fields to be used to search, for example, for, a, for an author. Uh, the, the bet. I don't know if I wrote it right. You can add the rule. You can add as many rules as you like and with uh, and or, or not logic operators. 
then you can click the search and see nothing to display, but maybe it is because I wrote uh, your name in the uh, incorrect way. Then we have functionality to deposit your research in the uh, in the research uh, in the um, uh, institutional repository of your organization or if you do not want to deposit it, you can use the related Zenodo communities that are related to the, that are associated to the dashboard. Clicking by new upload, you will be redirected to the uh, Zenodo uh, upload feature and it will make you um, upload the data on the, on the dashboard in Zenodo, on the community in Zenodo. Then we also provide the link functionality. To link, you must be, uh, you, you must sign in because uh, we need to know who is that is making the linking. Once you are signed in, you can link, you can search, for example, let me try Alessia Bardi because I know how to write it. And you can find all the information related to this search in open air, in Crossref, in data site, and also in ORCID. The first uh, result that uh, is shown in ORCID is not the one we want. So we can go and search for the others. And then we are shown all the publications that are uh, published by Alessia. And we can select one or more to be linked to a product. In this case, we will link to an entity. In this case, we select a community. The area is selected by default, but we can select also others, for example, digital humanities and cultural heritage. And then if I click finish linking, these two sources will be linked to the area and to digital humanities and cultural heritage. I, I will not do it because I do not want to. Once I link, the manager of the, of the gateway will be asked to verify the link and it can approve or remove it. And this is more or less everything very, very, very quickly because then you will go to have the end zone with, uh, with HSBET. So HSBET, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Miriam. And uh, so uh, we received a comment on the chat saying that uh, it was a bit uh, too small for screen. Sorry for that, but don't worry because uh, we are going to uh, go through the same uh, features together, step by step. So uh, you will have your chance to uh, get engaged pretty much now. So now I would like to ask you to prepare your keyboards. And uh, so let me just leave the instructions here. So you are invited to visit the dashboard, okay, in your own uh, browser. So uh, go to daria.openai.eu and, um, and try, please try to uh, log in. Uh, there are many login options. You can use your ORCID, you can use your institutional one, you can use social media, it's really up to you. Just go there, take a test, try to log in and if you uh, are friends with Daria and inter or, or interested in uh, digital humanities, you are also very welcome to uh, subscribe uh, to the gateway. So I uh, give you a couple of, uh, so daria.openair.daria.eu, uh, daria.openair.eu, sorry. Oh yeah, thanks Gwen for uh, putting it to the, to the chat. So the first question I want to ask you because it's super important, especially for the open air team uh, to, you know, to uh, um, um, gain a feedback uh, of your experiences, how much the, the infrastructure, the discovery environment is resonating with you. Uh, is that, are you happy with the, are you happy with the, with the sign-in options? I don't think uh, we need to open up the Mentimeter that I prefer that I prepared prepared for this purpose. Uh, I would like to just ask you uh, to put your opinion in the chat. Okay, 
it can be also silent, yes, but it can also be a suggestion if you have anything in mind, whether you found it convenient, whether uh, you could uh, use the federated login uh, with your ORCID or Facebook or what you, what have you. And you are also very welcome to raise your hand and speak up at this point, okay? Oops. Aha, uh -huh. not everyone knows the institutions are behind EDU gain, that's, that's, that's a point. That's a point, yeah. Okay, if you have no other specific feedback, please also feel free to raise your hand or uh, just put into the chat if you have ex problems accessing with the, with the dashboard because uh, we are going to play around with the, with the search functionalities uh, in the coming minutes. So uh, we should uh, stay on the same page, almost literally. Because um, the second exercise will be that uh, we can, uh, take a, can take a step forward uh, if you are able to, if you were able to uh, sign in. Uh, here you can see the Mentimeter that we skipped, but here you can also see the, the signing options, uh, Orchid, Facebook, Google, uh, whatever, social media. So now let's go, let's go to the search facilities, okay? Uh, Try a single click on a search, and um, I think let's start with the let's start with the projects. Okay, so if you uh, if you uh, click on uh, one of the attributes, for instance, project name, you can uh, try this year, humanities at scale or Sendari. These are the Daria projects uh, that are visible in the dashboard, and you can. Uh, include them to the search and see uh, what kind of information you found about this project. Let me stop my, uh, let my, let me uh, also go to the, ah, I see ORCID worked, cool. Okay, let me also go to the, go to the uh, dashboard myself. And so research outcomes, projects, this year, and let me also reshare my screen with you. Okay. So if you click on, here you can see the projects associated with Doria. It was, um, it was quite a decision, you know, we decided that the bigger projects in which uh, we are just one, which are not Doria dominant, we just one, uh, have one, um, um, we, we are just one of the contributors. We decide like Partenos or the Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud or Ermios or many of these uh, highly collaborative EU projects. We decided not to claim Historia projects because uh, their ownership is essentially shared across many research infrastructures and institutions. But so you can find quite an information um, about the EU projects associated with Doria. And what is uh, more important, uh, you will find the publications, no research data in the case of this year, uh, but the software as well. Okay, so uh, what I mentioned to you, how easily uh, project outputs can uh, get scattered on the web, um, this is certainly a tool that goes against this. Um, do you have any questions so far? Uh, please feel free to raise your uh, hand if you have, or just speak up or put your remarks to the chat. Um, if not, then um, we can take, we can go even uh, one degree deeper. Yes? Elizabeth, sorry to interrupt. So people yes. cannot speak up themselves. So, ah, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> so what I said I at the beginning. So I didn't put it in the chat. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so there are two questions in the Q and A. 
Yeah, okay. So maybe um, you can just take a look at those. Uh, of I course, know. we can always do that. Yeah. Uh, to complement, in fact, it's working, but depending on spelling for me, yes, or probably uh, the search, uh, the search uh, uh, facilities are, are case sensitive. If I can, if I can say something on the first question. Uh, in OpenAI, it is not possible to display or publish the work from one researcher, but only the work is referred as the, the corresponding author. It is not the case because we do not have authors as entities in OpenAI, not, not for the moment at least. And um, when we search for uh, an author, we search in an index. So you can find uh, your information and also the information of the, the other authors that match the, the query, the result of the query. Thanks a lot for this, uh, for this uh, update, Miriam. And I think uh, we are also going to have a search exercise where uh, we are going to use the author field in the faceted search. So I think we can, uh, we can move to this point. So, our second exercise uh, has to do with uh, the advanced search uh, capabilities uh, of the dashboard. So uh, yeah, project name this we did. So you, you uh, can play around with it uh, also on your own later on after the webinar and advanced search. So as you can see, I put together quite a, quite a query for you. So, uh, you can see it on my screen just below the big blue search button. You can see advanced search and uh, you can uh, search along different facets if you click on it. So I would invite you to try advanced search, uh, select publications with, or, or you can just skip this part. And let's try to combine different facets. So. I was trying to put together a search query for you that is very typical of Doria. And so DEI, the text encoding initiative is, uh, is, is quite a good candidate for that uh, because there is a lot of discussion uh, and lots of work uh, in Doria going on uh, around the text encoding initiative. So uh, put DEI in a free text search or you can uh, uh, search it also as subject area, okay? And then uh, with the plus button uh, that you can find in the advanced search, um, you also have the possibility to search uh, works of individual authors. So uh, I picked uh, the previous director slash founder of Doria, uh, Laurent Romery, to tribute uh, his work a little bit uh, also uh, on this occasion. So try to search TEI plus uh, select the author field uh, in the advanced search possibilities and fill it with Laurent Romery. You can uh, find the exact spelling here. And we can see what we find. Now I stop sharing my screen uh, and we'll switch to the dashboard myself. In the meantime, uh, you can complete your uh, search query on your own in your own browser. So search advanced search DEI and let me reshare my screen with you. Okay, so you can uh, see here is this bleak. Uh, I hope the, the size of the screen is okay now. You can add the rule, you can select from the many fields, title, author, ORCID ID, if you want to uh, make it sure, description, subject, publisher, access mode, community, la 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 la, many things. Uh, I select author, type in Lauren. hopefully without typos. And let's see what we have. So 
it's really interesting to see like on the left side uh you can see uh the facets so you can see that uh there are actually many content types reports conference objects uh preprints book chapters uh many things that are brought together uh from many places uh you can see how many of them are added to communities this COVID 19 is especially interesting to explore but uh i will uh stay disciplined and not uh, check it here you can see the content providers so indeed we are bringing together uh content uh, from many resources and countries and so um i think the format uh won't allow us to interact that much um or uh, explore uh things live on your own but what i want you to see also is that um is that um, if you click on uh, one record that uh, uh, I randomly selected here, uh, Miriam was talking about interlinking, interlinking re relevant content types. So on the landing page of a record, which is um, a research article from 2015, uh, in this case, you can see citing possibilities, you can see sharing possibilities on the top. But what is even more exciting, at least to me, is that uh, if you click on related research, uh, you will see, in this case, a software interlinked with this publication. So, you know, our long awaited dream of um, being able to um, permanently link um, data sets, code, um, other research outputs with our publications and keep all this package together is possible uh, via uh, this uh, research community gateway. I think it's a really important feature. And so if you um, uh, want to do this on your own with your own publications or publications of somebody who trusts you, uh, you can click on this linking feature and then uh, you can play around uh, with that. Let me have a set. Can I add one thing? Of course, always. The, the, the it shows you the related uh, research result shows you that it has been added uh, to the gateway because it was inferred by open air the mm -hmm. link. So you also have an idea why it is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to. So it doesn't it doesn't come by surprise. Yeah, thanks for this. Thanks for this uh, compliment, like uh, this this extra information, uh, Steve Loper, your grand Miriam. So, if you do, I don't see any questions so far. I really hope that uh, you are still with me. Now, uh, as a first step, I would like to invite you to go and hunt for your own uh, institutional repository or synodal communities and look at ways how you can uh, plug them in to the Daria uh, dashboard or to any other dashboard. You know, you can do this um, with a bigger digital humanities and cultural heritage collection, many others. So let me just, uh, let me just uh, share you how to do this and then on your own, you can, um, go and take a look uh, at your own uh, at your own uh, repositories that you have in mind so if you click on deposit uh in the deposit tab then it will land on this um blue colored uh landing page of uh, depositing research that miriam already showed you and so um the question you might have in mind is that okay let's see whether my institutional repository is here. So the repository I have in mind is an Irish one, for instance, where my uh, boss Jennifer Edmund um, is obliged to deposit uh, her publications. So I just start try start typing Trinity College. I'm not sure whether. Um, uh huh. So. You can see I find the Trinity College Digital Repository here. I find the DSpace instance of uh, uh, Trinity and many other smaller repositories um, that are um, associated 
with Trinity. But of course, you can do this with your institution, whatever you have, whether it's a thematic one, national one, institutional one. And if you go to visit repository to deposit, it connects you, it makes the handshake or makes the step from one space to another. And you can put your research there. Um, and then uh, once it's uh, harvested by uh, open air again, um, um, it will uh, land in the uh, respective community. So let me again zoom out a little bit. You are very welcome to put in the chat what you found. Did you find your institutional repository? Did you find what you're looking for? Uh, or is it a repository that uh, you're actually missing? Found the repository, cool. And of course, uh, you can do the same thing. Uh, via, you can do the same thing with Zenodo communities. So if you scroll down, uh, you can see, find an institutional repository or use related Zenodo communities. And you can see that for Daria, uh, we selected two, uh, two communities, um, the major like master uh, Daria collection. And uh, we also have a work, we, we have many working groups at Daria and one of them uh, has their own dedicated space on Zenodo. And uh, it's, since it's, uh, it's highly affiliated with Daria, uh, we added uh, the community, the Senado community of this working group as well. The last thing I want to show you as kind of as a, as a um, hands-on exercise is the linking functionality of the dashboard. And you're very welcome to give it a try with your own name. You know, we are academics try to, uh, perform such exercises with our very identity first or a researcher who you read, who you like, who you respect. And so um, to make your own work visible um, in the open air research graph in general and in the Doria uh, gateway in particular, uh, you have many options uh, to do this. So um, I will going to do the exercise uh, with uh, um, the uh, aforementioned uh, both of mine, Jennifer Edmond, and see what are her options uh, to add uh, her publications and other research work to the dashboard. So you can see, uh, I just click on, um, just include her name. And so you can see uh, what we find, uh, book reviews, um, collaborative publications, um, project deliverables and the like that are already present in the open air system. Uh, you can import data from Crossref, but let's, I don't know what, uh, what, what I did wrong. Uh, you can import uh, data from data site and you can also import um, data from um, uh, ORCID. I think the reason why the system found Jennifer's ORCID and um, no publications must be a question of permissions, you know, like it's super, I think it's super important to push through this information to all users of ORCID. Uh, if you want uh, your publications to be visible, not only for people, but also for systems like this one, um, it's super important to uh, reflect it in your uh, privacy settings of your ORCID profile. Um, so I think uh, that's it. And then as, um, as uh, uh, Miriam uh, already showed it to you, you can uh, select the publications. Um, you can see some altmetric information even here, and uh, then you can uh, link to the publication uh, to the Doria dashboard or the dashboard or community that you have in mind. So I think uh, that was my quick um, um, 
you know, test drive round uh, with you. I hope that uh, like now it's 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 a bit it's a bit of a pity that we are online and uh, we cannot you know freely interact uh, face to face. But um, don't worry because um, I'm gonna come back to my presentation and. Uh, we are not going to start the Q&A session before we do a good old Mentimeter before. So uh, I hope uh, my uh, hands-on hints were not too quick. I hope it was easy to follow. I hope uh, you had a good time like uh, uh, exploring uh, the uh, research community dashboard or the Open Air Discovery Framework in general uh, on your own. I would like to ask you to, again, uh, go to mentimeter.com and use the code uh, that you can see here. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to do the same as I did. I'm going to just uh, copy the link that you can directly access uh, the Mentimeter and then you just need to click on it. Uh, just give me a second. Mm. You can take a you can take a breath in the meantime. Or Miriam, if you uh, have anything to add to this, uh, you are very welcome to uh, comment on the feature overview. Uh, maybe just the the orchid that wasn't mm -hmm. found. Maybe it wasn't the the orchid you were searching for. Maybe it was <laughs> another Edmond. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's nice to be Ege Beto Cifra because there are not many people running around uh, with this name. Like, But on the other hand, with this name, it for me, it was pretty obvious, the values of ORCID and the value of disambiguation, you know. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, I found the link to the to our last Mentimeter, the feedback Mentimeter in the meantime. You can simply click on it and you can share how did you like the discovery experience uh, on the dashboard, um, whether uh, it's clear to you, whether you could find your own publications easily, whether you found something surprising that you didn't mean to, like that, that look a little bit odd. Uh, or any kinds of experiences, you are very welcome to uh, share with us. And this is going to be a nice, you know, transition uh, to uh, the Q&A session. Let me know if you have uh, any problems uh, with accessing the Mentimeter poll. And while you are typing, I'm sharing my screen with the results page, okay? Uh, which is which is yet empty. Of course, if you don't want to uh, play around with the Mentimeter, or you're not in favor of, you know, like uh, uh, using multiple tools and multitasking. Uh, you are also very welcome to uh, put your feedback to the Q&A or to the chat. Uh -huh. Handle case sensitive things in the search box. This is, a, this is a super useful feedback. Thanks a lot, whoever submitted it. Yes, every, every kind of feedback is very, very important for us to make the service better because we want the community uh, user to use the services. Mm -hmm. So every feedback is precious, thanks. I can see in the meantime that uh, people are putting stuff uh, in the chat as well. Miriam, can you uh, uh, read out those? I think the Mentimeter page is showing only for panelists, but not to attendees. 
the link, I mean. Oh, okay. Ah, sorry for that. Let me just um, copy the voting link once again, and also the digit code. Maybe it's easier if I uh, copy the digit code. That was the reason of the silence there. Okay, sorry for uh, my mistake. Now you can. I go back to the, come back to the chat and all panelists and attendees and here you can find the digit code. So go mentimeter.com or menti.com and uh, uh, enter these digits. And now it should work for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I come back to the result page. More Daria affiliated repositories included. Yes, this is a this is a super important remark. Uh, as I told you, uh, currently under the research data content types, you can only find data from two uh, sources. Uh, first from the Doria uh, Zotero com uh, Zenodo community, uh, data that is shared there. And second from the French Nakala repository. In the coming days, we are going to uh, add a text grid also as data source and honestly, I love the vote of uh, displaying digital critical editions as research data because it's a super important but very domain specific data type in the arts and humanities. So this is more to come, but in order to make it more diverse, also linguistically, also disciplinary, um, I would really love to see more data service providers from across Daria contacting us that, hey, hey, I want to include my service. Uh, how can I do this? And we would be very happy to help you out. Uh, but basically, uh, in order to do that, uh, you will need to build the same metadata crosswalk, um, as I mentioned, from your standards to the open, to the uh, open air uh, standards. I tried it quickly, but linking wasn't so easy to import publication from ORCID, okay. Yes, the, the linking part is the more difficult to, to manage. But if you write in the chat or whatever you prefer, uh, which was the, the problem that you get, we can try and see if we can handle it in some ways. Maybe, and also, maybe yeah? sorry to interrupt Miriam, but maybe the person who wrote this can raise their hands and then I can allow you to talk. It might be easier now. If they if they wish, if they wish, if they if they don't just <laughs> uh, also the more functionalities in managing search results. Well, what? Uh -huh, what do you mean by more functionalities? Yes, it would be nice to nice to uh, elaborate. Okay, so it was your drunk. The drunk. Uh, <clears throat> ah, okay. Yes. I, uh, what I had in mind is uh, to be able to sort search results, to be able in ex uh, the export search results in different formats, to be uh -huh. uh, able to uh, do export import in some other system easily, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and actually also I prefer more condensed, uh, but this is matter of of design. I prefer more more condensed uh, 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 displays. So you need uh, a scroll, uh, or you 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 have only two or three references on your screen. Then you need to scroll to see uh, more. I yeah. see. So it's uh, but th this is design issue. And uh, but what is important is really to be yes. Uh, also sorting by relevance, that's, that's always interesting. And uh, the information is missing how the, you count the rele relevance, you know, by frequency of appearance of the term or, yes. But uh, 
in short, I would like to see more sort options uh, by okay. authors, by alphabetically. Okay, thank you very much. First or titles or, or whatever. So it's, uh, but export import options are also important and especially uh, offering uh, different formats. You, you can download, yes. Oh, can sorry, download. maybe I missed something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, of course, because we did uh, very, very quickly. But you can download the, the result of the search. You can uh, see to my uh, screen, your Tranka. So yes. you, can, you can download in a, can you see it? Yes. Okay, you can download uh, the search results in a CSV. And my also my comment is that, uh, so I think it was a super important remark from you, like transparency in this sort by relevance, because it's always a mystery to researchers. But regarding the others, I would also recommend to play around with the facets on the left. So you can tick like if you want to have just articles, you can tick one. If you want to, if it's a multilingual uh, search result set, then you can. Uh, so you can play around with all these uh, facets on the left, content provider, country, whatever. And then you can always uh, filter the search results along these facets. So this is also something maybe. Yes, and and last last uh, comment related to search results. It's uh, what I really like with Google Scholar, and it, I find it really very often very useful. Is this uh, uh, citation? Uh, so 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 very often I use Google Scholar only to be able just to very quickly copy and paste the reference in different formats. Uh, um, APA or, or uh, Harvard or... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Thanks. Oh yeah. yeah, it's it's so it's so right. Yes, and you know, like if you click on a result, like you click on CIDIS research product, yes, uh, then you can change from a couple of like APA mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Harvard and MLA and like the... the, ah, the yes. So this you can do, but you need to click one click further for yes. that on the result page. Like you cannot, I don't know, Miriam. Maybe we okay. should, we should we, ask. That's okay. That's thank you for, for that. I didn't realize this earlier. But maybe it is not so, it is not so um, understandable and we should, uh, I don't know, make it more uh, uh, clear that you can have this kind of features. My idea is that is that uh, maybe like uh, I don't know whether it's possible, Miriam, but maybe like uh, um, indicating this on the search result landing page on the record level, like in addition to like uh, the tags, like maybe uh, I don't know, like like uh, you could link. I, to... I can write it down and and ask. The... Yeah, you can link to like. Uh, um, export citation or site as or something like that yeah okay let me go back to the to the mentimeter uh results we discussed the more functionalities we discussed the difficulties with orchid we discussed more daria services yes this is the biggest yes um and the case sensitivity so i think uh if yeah, you Yes. There is a question in the question and answers. Okay, yeah. So uh, in the meantime, I'm closing the Mentimeter. I'm stop sharing my screen for the time being to see the to see the uh, questions. And uh, so I leave the Mentimeter open. If you play around with the with the dashboard later after the webinar, uh, you are very welcome to um, also leave uh, your feedback later. As I said before, it will be super important for us to have all kind of feedback that you would like to to share with us. Everything. So Johan has a question on uh, in, uh, in the Q and A. Uh, who says that when the application fails, merging of item that should not be merged. Uh, 
what can be done to fix it? Hi, hi, hi. This is a this is quite an aggregation oriented query. This computer the, 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 the application is a, a complex matter that can fail. It can merge items that shouldn't be merged, and it cannot merge items that should be merged. So what can we do uh, when we realize that uh, these kind of things have happened? We try to understand why, and we try to refine our, our the duplication algorithm to avoid this kind of situation in the future. It's all we can do. Yeah, I know it's a it's a different it's it's a difficult matter like finding yeah. the balance in 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 uh, the merging policies, and I also see a question uh, from uh, uh, yes from Cinciana uh, uh, maybe my my pronunciation might be wrong, who said that uh, uh, she's con he's connected uh, they are connected a uh, screen without a microphone or camera capacity and so. Uh, uh, they tried to link import an article from Orchid, but remained hanging between the two platforms. Uh, possibly with more attempts, it would work out. Yes, I suppose it is a, a problem. Not, yeah. not, not, not due to the, to the gateway. It's always a it's always a question of alignment between different systems, right? Like a like a question of translation in a computational sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we still have uh, like one or two minutes for last minute feedback, last minute questions, or if. Uh, you don't have any more uh, questions, then maybe I, I would like I would like to to uh, to share my email address or yours or the email of both of yeah, us absolutely. in case they have a question uh, or uh, feedback to give us or yeah, Miriam, do you more. you can I I should have prepared the thank you slide and maybe I have it somewhere, but uh, probably the easier is if you could uh, put your email address to the chat and then people can uh, people can save it. There's also someone, uh, someone, Harry Dimitropoulos, who raised their hand, so I'm oh. going to allow him to talk. Oh, OK, yeah, Harry. Uh, uh, yeah, um, please go ahead. Hello. Actually, no. Uh, it was a mistake that I raised the hand. I oh, actually okay. wanted to talk to you, but I'm going to send an email. It's something beyond the webinar. <laughs> I no hope problem. so. But it's nice to have you here, Harry, anyway. Thank you. Thank it's you. always so nice to have the experts as well present. <laughs> yeah. OK. Just a um, moment. I will share my screen. It should be the right one. Yes. So, and maybe you can also uh, put it to the chat and then people uh, can just copy paste it. I do not remind your, uh, your uh, email is bad. It's okay, it's okay. I can also, uh, I can also uh, put it to the chat. Uh, dot dot slash cifra at daria.eu. Um, you are very welcome to uh, contact me, uh, especially if you are from around Daria, how to make the dashboard research, uh, the, uh, the dashboard work for your research, for your service, for your institution, for your Daria in kind contribution, you know. Um, so thanks a lot to everybody. I think we can uh, wrap it up and, uh, and, and, and say goodbye to each other. Um, as a concluding remark, so I think what we what we learned um, as like the Daria team working on this, uh, this dashboard is first of all it's super important to make our services and the scholarship they are uh, curating and publishing making available visible because uh, we need to because it's a super important step to get uh, appropriately. Uh, valued and and like the, the, the get our scholarship visible and valued enough um by building the building the crosswalks what i 
think to, it's important to highlight that um, it's always a question of translation, as you could as you could see. Um, wrong email. Ah, okay, I will call. Uh, I'm gonna uh, correct it. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so it's 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 super important that building metadata crosswalk is not a one directional uh, work. It's never as easy that the um, service providers do this on their end and end of the story. Uh, since it's translation, since it's bridging different systems, it's necessary to have support structure available on both ends of the system. So we are super grateful for the Open Air team for their continuous and, and, and intensive support. Thanks a lot. Um, it would have been uh, much more difficult uh, to do this alone. What else? I think that's it. Um, I corrected my email address uh, in the meantime. And uh, yes, uh, you know, now you know where to find us uh, with your additional remarks. Thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Ashabeth and uh, Miriam, for a uh, very interesting uh, showcase. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for attending and for your questions. Um, so, like I said at the beginning, this has been recorded, and uh, both the recordings and the slides will be made available via the usual channels.